Whether you are driving for work or just running personal errands in your car, you're in danger on the road unless you drive defensively. Motor vehicle accidents are the number one cause of accidental death in the United States. They are also the number one cause of work-related fatalities. In this class, we will cover defensive driving techniques that will help you avoid traffic accidents so you will always be able to arrive at your destination safe and sound. The main purpose of this session is to talk about defensive driving techniques so that you can be safe behind the wheel and avoid accidents. By the time this session is over, you will be able to identify driving hazards, understand defensive driving techniques, and use defensive driving techniques to prevent accidents and injuries on the road. When you think of work-related safety hazards, you probably think about what goes on inside the workplace. But one of the greatest threats to your safety is not in the workplace, but rather on the road. Someone is injured every 18 seconds. Over 2 million of those injuries turn out to be disabling. A person dies in a crash on a U.S. road every 11 minutes. In fact, motor vehicle accidents are the most common cause of death in the United States, more than cancer or heart attacks. And one in four work fatalities involves a motor vehicle accident. These statistics are cause for concern. They also provide the explanation for this safety training session. We don't want you to become a statistic. Have you or anyone you know ever been involved in a motor accident? Most people have had at least a fender bender. Think about the consequences of a serious accident. It could change your life and not for the better. Here are some key driving hazards caused by human error. Reckless driving, such as speeding, weaving through traffic, ignoring signs and signals, tailgating, and dangerous passing. Distracted driving, including using cell phones, putting on makeup, eating or drinking, writing or reading, or getting wrapped up in thoughts or emotions and failing to pay attention to the road. Fatigue that results in poor judgment and slow reaction times. Aggressive driving, having to get there first and cutting people off, blowing horns, flashing lights, and making obscene or angry gestures at anyone who gets in the way. Failure to maintain vehicles in good operating condition, such as driving with brakes that aren't working effectively, lights that are out, and bald tires. And of course, driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs, which is responsible for about one-third of all road accidents. Have you seen any of these hazards on the road recently? Some common distractions to be aware of are looking at scenery, looking for route signs, unfamiliar situations such as staring at an auto accident, problems inside the vehicle such as using a car phone, lighting a cigarette, or even a bee in the car, and recognizing someone that you know. In addition to hazards caused by human error, you may also have to contend with hazards caused by dangerous road and weather conditions. For example, Bad weather conditions such as rain, fog, wind, snow, or ice. Difficult road conditions such as sharp curves, busy intersections, uneven surfaces, or obstacles in the road. Poor light at night or glare during the day. Heavy traffic with a lot of stop and go, people changing lanes, and so on. Road work with reduced or narrowed lanes or accidents which can cause dangerous conditions for the drivers approaching the accident scene. If you're involved in a traffic accident because of driving hazards and bad conditions, you could suffer serious injuries or even be killed. Fortunately, we have a simple but effective means to protect ourselves in the event of a motor vehicle accident. We're talking, of course, about seat belts. In the past 25 to 30 years, seat belts have saved over 100,000 lives. A properly worn seat belt will prevent you from hitting the steering wheel dash or windshield. It will also keep you inside the vehicle, which increases your chances of survival. You're 25 times more likely to be killed if you're thrown from a vehicle during an accident. Seat belts are also designed to use your body's strong bones to absorb shock rather than damaging delicate internal organs. Wearing a seat belt will increase your chance of remaining conscious after a crash which will help you get out of the vehicle so that you can help others. Finally, 
A seatbelt keeps you in control of your vehicle if you are forced to swerve or brake suddenly. It is important to buckle up no matter what reason you may have for being in a vehicle. In addition, company policy requires that you wear your seatbelt any time you are driving. We mentioned earlier that one significant driving hazard is vehicles in poor operating condition. To eliminate this hazard, maintain your vehicle by following the maintenance schedule outlined in your owner's manual and report needed maintenance on company and client vehicles appropriately. Check and maintain proper fluid levels for coolant, brake fluid, and power steering fluid. Don't forget to keep the windshield washer tank full so you don't run out when you need it. Have your brakes inspected and report any brake problems. Check your tires to make sure they are all properly inflated and still have sufficient tread. Tires should be rotated every 10,000 miles so that they wear evenly and change tires as necessary. Also, be sure your lights, your signals, and wipers are all working properly. In addition to monitoring and assisting with regular maintenance, you must complete the vehicle inspection form before and after driving any company or client vehicle. The exterior inspection will cover the headlights. Both the high and low beams must be checked. Turn signals. The front and back pairs of signals must work. In addition, the hazard lights must be operational. Windshield wipers. Windshield wipers must work on all settings. Wiper fluid pump should also be tested. Windows. Windows must be secure in a good operating condition. Tires. All tires should be visibly inspected for inflation and tread wear. Body damage. Any body damage should be reported even if the fleet manager is already aware of the problem. Cleanliness. The outside of the vehicle should be inspected for accumulated dirt and grime. The interior inspection will cover brakes. Brakes should be checked by putting the vehicle in gear without acceleration and applying the brakes. Steering. Steering wheels should both have a full range of motion and effectively turn the front wheels. Mirrors. All mirrors must be present, unobstructive, and adjusted to the person who will be driving the vehicle. Gauges and indicators. All gauges and indicators should be visually inspected to make sure that they are operational. Cleanliness. The interior of the vehicle should be free of any litter, food, or excessive dirt. Safety equipment. Equipment such as a fire extinguisher, road triangles, and first aid kit should be in your vehicle at all times. Paperwork. Paperwork includes the vehicle registration, insurance paperwork, and accident report form. If you're carrying a load of any kind, either people or cargo, make sure you don't overload your vehicle. Make sure every person in the vehicle has a seat and a seat belt. Don't allow doubling up or trying to squeeze more people into the vehicle than it can accommodate safely. Make sure cargo is properly secured so it won't shift around while you're driving. Also make sure that cargo doesn't block your vision and that you can see out of all windows. Now let's see how well you remember the driving hazards we've just talked about. How many driving hazards caused by human error can you identify in five seconds? Driving hazards caused by human error include reckless driving, distracted driving, fatigue, aggressive driving, failure to keep vehicle in good operating condition, and driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. See how many driving hazards caused by dangerous conditions you can think of in five seconds. Driving hazards caused by dangerous conditions include bad weather, difficult road conditions, including sharp curves, busy intersections, uneven surfaces or obstacles, poor light or glare, heavy traffic, road work, and accidents. How did you do? Were you able to ID the hazards correctly? Now it's time to ask yourself if you understand the information presented so far. Do you understand what we've discussed about the variety of driving hazards you could face on the road? It's important for you to understand driving hazards so that you can appreciate the risk and be motivated to take the defensive driving precautions we're going to talk about in the next section of this training. Now let's continue to the next slide and talk about avoiding collisions.
Two-car collisions are among the most common kind of traffic accident. About one-third of two-car collisions occur at intersections, so be especially careful when entering an intersection. Head-on collisions are particularly dangerous and can be deadly. The key to avoiding them is to keep looking ahead down the road for possible problems. If a crash looks like it's coming, slow down and even go off the road to the right to avoid a head-on crash. Rear-end collisions are also dangerous, but they too are preventable. For example, signal your intentions when stopping or turning. Be alert for tailgaters. Slow down gradually and leave room in front of you when stopped so that if you are hit from behind, at least you won't hit another vehicle in front of you. To avoid colliding with a vehicle in front, take these precautions. Look well ahead for hazards, brake lights, and turn signals, and always maintain sufficient distance between you and the vehicle in front of you so that you have enough room to stop safely. To avoid side collisions, be sure to approach all intersections with caution. Always look both ways before proceeding, even if you have the right of way. To avoid backup collisions of other vehicles and objects when backing up, make sure that you are aware of what is behind you before you enter your vehicle. If you are backing up in a very congested area, back up as slow as possible and stop and get out to check the area if you are still unsure of what, what is behind you. If you have another person with you, it is always best to ask that person to be a ground guide for you. Defensive drivers are also alert and focused on their driving and prepared for anything that might occur on the road. Being a defensive driver means keeping your mind on your driving and your hands on the wheel. You can't be talking on the phone, thinking about other things, fiddling with the radio or CD player, or carrying on animated conversations with passengers. You also have to be constantly looking ahead for changes in traffic or road conditions. If you see brake lights ahead, slow down and be prepared to stop. Keep an eye on what's going on behind you. Check your mirrors frequently for oncoming vehicles. Always expect the unexpected when driving. That way, you'll never be surprised and you'll always be in control. Watch for other drivers making sudden moves. Keep alert for pedestrians, bicyclists, and animals darting out in front of you. If you're a defensive driver, you'll also yield to other drivers instead of challenging them to a dangerous duel. Think about the way you drive. Do you always use defensive driving techniques that we've discussed here? Your senses play an important role in being a dependable driver. Sight. Your vision decreases as speed increases, so make sure to obey all speed limits and keep alert by watching for turn signals and brake lights. Feeling. Your feeling can warn you of a deficiency in some areas of driving. For instance, you are cornering too fast or have already started to skid. Hearing. Communicate with other drivers by using your horn and realize they will do the same. Defensive drivers obey traffic rules and use common sense. We expect all company drivers to be defensive drivers. You must always obey speed limits, traffic signs, and signals. You must follow the two-second rule. This means you should always stay at least two seconds behind the vehicle in front and allow more distance at night or in bad weather. How can you tell if you're two seconds behind another vehicle? Simple. Just note when the vehicle in front passes a traffic sign or utility pole. Then slowly count 1, 2. If you pass the sign or pole before you've counted to 2, you're too close. Another thing defensive drivers do is signal their intentions. If you're going to turn or want to change lanes, switch on your turning signal in plenty of time. If you plan to stop, tap your brakes a few times to slow down so that the driver behind you can see that your brake lights are hit and they will understand that you're slowing down and may stop. If somebody's right behind you, stick your arm out the window and extend it downward and wave your hand backwards to show you intend to stop. Defensive drivers also pass with care and only where allowed. They slow down when being passed if the other vehicle needs room to pass safely. It is important that you adjust your speed down based on the driving conditions. This is especially true for expressway ramps and curves. 
where posted recommended limits are developed for cars traveling in ideal conditions. Faster speeds do more than just increase the time it takes you to get somewhere. In addition, they increase the chances that you will be involved in an accident. The severity of the accident, the amount of fuel that you consume to get from A to B, and the maintenance cost associated with keeping your vehicle in good working order. Let's take a look at a common driving situation. Suppose a person is driving a car at 55 miles per hour during the day on a dry level road. He sees a stopped car in front of him and applies the brakes. What is the shortest stopping distance that can be reasonably expected? If we factor in a reaction time of 1.5 seconds, this means the car will travel 120.9 feet before the brakes are applied. The stopping time, once the brakes are engaged, will be 134.4 feet. The conclusion is that the total stopping distance will be 255.3 feet. As you can see, the reaction time plays a big part in the stopping distance, which is why it is important to always stay alert. Awareness of your environment is critical when moving with traffic. This is why you will need to follow safe vehicle passing procedures. When you are following a slow moving vehicle, your first step should be to ask yourself if the pass is really necessary. If you decide to pass a vehicle, take in the whole picture. Make sure the road is clear and also check your mirrors to be sure that no one else is starting to pass you. Make sure there is enough distance to pass safely. Signal your intentions. Always communicate your intentions to others. Pass quickly, but safely, based on those conditions. And then resume your normal speed. If you notice that a vehicle is passing you, be sure to look ahead for potential dangers and reduce your speed if necessary. When the weather or road conditions are bad, you need to adjust your driving accordingly to prevent accidents. Drive more slowly. Turn on your lights and wipers if necessary. Increase the following distance from 2 to 4 seconds in bad weather or when road conditions are poor. Avoid puddles. They can hide damaging potholes which get your brakes wet. That can make it harder to stop in an emergency. Be cautious when there is a light misty rain after a dry spell. The moisture mixes with road oil to create a slick surface. Be prepared to handle a skid. If you skid, take your foot off the gas and turn the wheel in the direction you want the front of the car to go. Use a light touch and keep your foot off the brake. For example, the back of your car is skidding to the right. That means the front of the car is heading to the left. To regain control and come out of the skid safely, you should turn the wheel gently to the right. One last defensive driving technique for bad weather during the winter months is to be aware of icy patches. Remember, bridges, overpasses, and shady spots are most likely to freeze first and stay frozen the longest. Driving at night adds extra hazards and is often more stressful. To reduce the risk of having an accident when driving after dark, be sure to take these precautions. First of all, Start with a clean windshield and clean rear and side windows to improve your vision. Next, turn your lights on one half hour before sunset or earlier if it's a dark day. Increase your following distance to four seconds at night. Be extra careful on dark curves and at intersections. Be a courteous as well as safe driver by switching from high to low beams if there's a car in front of you or one coming towards you. If a driver coming the other way isn't so courteous, look briefly off to the right side of the road to avoid the blinding glare. If you have car trouble at night, pull completely off the road and use your emergency flashers. You should also have flares or fluorescent triangles in your vehicle that you can use so that oncoming traffic is aware of your position. Driving at night can be dangerous. How many accidents occur after dark? Do you always take these precautions when driving at night? Traffic safety experts say that fatigued or drowsy driving may be a factor in more than 100,000 crashes every year. 
crashes that result in 40,000 injuries and more than 1,500 deaths. A National Sleep Foundation study finds that 51% of adults admit to driving while drowsy, and 17% report to having fallen asleep at the wheel. To prevent accidents due to fatigue, take some simple precautions. Be especially careful late at night, early in the morning, and during the mid-afternoon hours when drowsy driving accidents are most likely to happen. Be sure you are well rested before reporting to work. You must advise your manager if you feel you are too tired to drive. When driving long distances, get out of your vehicle every couple of hours to stretch and refresh. Also, set realistic and safe daily mileage goals. Avoid medications that cause drowsiness if you have to drive. Have you ever driven while drowsy? Have you ever almost fallen asleep at the wheel? Remember these tips to avoid accidents when you're tired. Safe drivers have a positive attitude. Recognize that attitude changes based on your surroundings and circumstances, and therefore it can affect your driving. A defensive driver takes every reasonable precaution to prevent traffic accidents over and above what the law requires. To become a defensive driver, yield rather than take the right of way. Adjust your behavior, how you feel. If you need to pull off the road to get your emotions in check, do it. Unpredictable and continually changing factors of light, weather, road, and traffic conditions. Unexpected actions by other drivers and pedestrians. Be dedicated to error-free driving. Aggressive driving and road rage have become a national epidemic. Defensive drivers don't engage in it or encourage it. So no matter how bad the traffic is or how frustrated you get, try to keep your emotions in check. Strong emotions have no place on the road. They can make you take risk and make foolish decisions that can get you killed. Take steps to stay relaxed, such as taking deep breaths when irritated, listening to soothing music, and remembering not to take the actions of other drivers personally. Always allow enough time to reach your destination safely. Check traffic reports and try to avoid congested areas. Don't provoke, challenge, or even respond to aggressive drivers. Move out of their way, avoid eye contact, and don't respond to rude gestures or abusive language. If an aggressive driver persists in challenging you, report the incident to the police, providing vehicle description, plate number, location, and direction of travel. Have you ever encountered an aggressive driver on the road or acted aggressively yourself? Remember the points in this slide. Every year, people are injured or killed on the road because another driver was driving under the influence. Defensive drivers never drink or take drugs and drive. They understand that alcohol and drugs impair your ability to determine distances, reaction time, judgment, and vision. So remember, coffee won't sober you up. Only time can do that. You will have to wait at least an hour for each drink you've consumed, including beer and wine, before it's safe to drive. If you've been drinking, ride with someone who hasn't. We have a zero tolerance policy regarding being under the influence of alcohol or drugs while at work. In addition, you may be asked to submit to a blood test any time you are involved in a vehicle accident, regardless of cause. Let's take a look at five basic driving rules that will help you stay safe on the road. Rule number one, be farsighted. If you are not looking far enough ahead, you will not have time to react to what is coming. In the city, look ahead about one city block. In the country, look ahead to the next curve or hill as far as you can. Rule number two, move your eyes continuously. Since you can only see clearly with your central vision, it is important to constantly shift your focus, including turning your head when necessary. Don't stare. Every two seconds, you should scan the area in front of you to look for hazards. Use your mirrors. Checking the side and rear view mirrors often will help you keep alert to what is coming and around you should you need to react quickly. 
Check your sides. This is especially true when approaching an intersection. Rule number three, take in the whole picture. Tunnel vision and other direct focus contact that you make while driving will impair your ability to fully understand and see the dangers that may lie ahead. In addition to checking your mirrors often and paying attention to other vehicles on the road, also be aware of alleyways. Oftentimes alleyways do not have stop signs reminding the driver to stop before exiting. Also, the driver of the vehicle will oftentimes need to pull out pretty far to be able to see the oncoming traffic. Intersections. Never assume that others on the road are going to do what the signs or signals say. Be sure you are confident of their intentions before proceeding through the intersection. Pedestrians. They have the right of way, but are often distracted in several ways, from talking with others while they are walking or texting on their phone. Be prepared to stop or alert them to your presence. Parked vehicles. Always scan ahead and stay far enough away from parked vehicles. Be aware of drivers that may be exiting their vehicle or preparing to pull out of their parking spot. Rule number four, maintain a space cushion. Most accidents can be prevented if the driver has enough time to react. As discussed earlier, the two second rule is a way for the defensive driver to judge the minimum safe following distance to help avoid collisions under ideal driving conditions. The red car's driver picks a tree to judge a two second safety buffer. The two second rule should be considered the minimum for cars and vans. Increase the two second rule to three or four or more seconds at night or if the following exist. Driving a larger vehicle. The larger a vehicle is, the greater amount of time it will take that vehicle to stop. Towing a trailer or any other item that increases the force pushing on the vehicle to stop. Weather conditions. Always increase the following distance for rain, snow, and icy conditions. Road conditions. Gravel roads or roads that may have debris on them will not allow you to stop as quickly. Unfamiliar areas. If you are not familiar with the area you are driving in, increase your following distance. Rule number five, communicate. If you are successful in communicating your intentions to other drivers on the road, you will increase your chances of arriving at your destination safely. Here are the main tools that you can use to communicate while driving. Turn signals. Always signal your intentions to turn before you apply the brakes to give the vehicle time behind you to prepare to slow down. If you are slowing down for a car in front of you that is turning, Tap your brakes twice to let the car behind you know that you will be slowing down. Hand signals. Even if your turn signals are functioning correctly, it is important that you understand that others on the road may be using hand signals to let you know what they are doing. If their arm is straight out to the left, then they plan to turn left. If it is bent up at a 90 degree angle from their elbow, then they intend to turn right. And finally, if it is bent down at a 90 degree angle from their elbow, they intend to stop. Using your horn in a friendly manner helps to alert other drivers to your location to avoid accidents. A friendly horn is often two short beeps. Avoid using long single beeps. Eye contact is a big indicator to other drivers that you are aware of where they are. If you are playing with the radio when you stop at an intersection, the other drivers at the intersection will be unclear of your intentions. It may be your turn to go, but they may proceed because they don't think that you are paying attention. Your lane position keeps a nice buffer between you and the other drivers and gives you room to maneuver due to obstacles in the road. Always try to stay in the center of the lane and pay attention to what lane you should be in before you're exiting. Never try to cross more than one lane at a time. It is always best to drive to the next exit or turn around if you think you will miss your exit versus trying to cut across traffic in a hurry to make it. Close calls count. If you follow the lesson learned in this training, you will greatly reduce your chances of being involved in an accident. There may be times that although you were not involved in an accident, 
you can easily see how one wrong move could have caused the accident. Chance alone does not determine the severity of an accident. Your ability to stay alert will be the biggest factor. When you are driving, that is the only thing you should be focused on. Every close call, every minor fender bender should be analyzed so that error can be eliminated from future driving. If despite your best efforts, you're involved in a traffic accident, Remember that most people will be upset and emotions will be high. So try to remain calm and take these steps. First, move to the side of the road if possible and turn off the ignition. Next, perform a first aid check on all drivers and passengers. Call the police and report your location and any injuries that require emergency medical services. Contact your supervisor. When the police arrive on scene, Collect insurance and registration information from the other driver and make sure to ask the police to send you a copy of their report. Draw a quick sketch or take a picture of the accident scene and jot down your recollection of exactly how the accident happened. Don't blame or discuss fault. The Accident Review Committee and Risk Manager will discuss the accident with you. Once the police are done on the scene, and if your vehicle is still drivable, do not drive the vehicle off the scene until your supervisor has authorized you to do so. All accident paperwork and a report describing what took place must be completed before you end your shift. In some cases, you will need to attend a call with the Accident Review Committee to discuss the details of the accident. Here are the main points to remember from this session on defensive driving. Know the driving hazards you're going to face on the road. Maintain your vehicle in good condition. Always wear a seat belt. Follow all traffic rules and obey all signals and signs. Be a safe and defensive driver every day and know how to respond in the event of an accident. Do you understand the information that we've just discussed about defensive driving techniques? Using these techniques on the road can help you prevent accidents so you can get where you're going safely every day. If you need to review any of the information that we have discussed, you may go back and do that now.